Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in the previous video, we have seen about uh, the OpenShift architecture and uh, how you can install uh, OpenShift on your MiniShift, right? So MiniShift is just a single master and single node cluster where you can have your application deployed for your testing purposes as well as for learning activities as well. So in that video, uh, if you haven't seen that, I will be giving the link in the description below so that you can have it and get the idea on what exactly an OpenShift is and how you can install uh, the MiniShift on your respective laptops and all. So this is the follow-up video for that where you can see what are the ways that we can interact with an OpenShift so that we'll be knowing like what are the multiple options that we have in order to interact to an uh, OpenShift cluster. Right. So getting into the topic, like there are a couple of ways, guys. One is the uh, using console, you can log in. Another one is a command line interface. OK. This is a CLI. Let me zoom a bit. Better. OK, yeah. So this this part we have seen already, like how you can log into your cluster and how you can uh, interact with the various options like the projects, the, the services and all. We have seen that today. Let's see how you can uh, interact using the CLI part. OK, the CLI, if you want to interact to an open shift through a CLI, we need to install some sort of binaries. Uh, these are called as OC tools. OK, so I'll be showing you how you can install those in both Windows as well as in Linux. In this video, I'll be showing you the Windows part. In the later video, I'll be showing you how you can do it in the, uh, Linux as well. OK, so what exactly is uh, CLI and what's the use of using CLI when compared to console? OK, if you see here, uh, this is the console part. OK, so in the console, you can do all your activities like you can view the projects, the the deployment, the routes and all, and you can have your storages and all, and you can see how many pods are there and everything you can do in the console. The same activities can be done from the CLI as well. So what exactly is the use uh, advantage of using CLI is, for example, if you're doing some sort of automation, okay? Like if you are implementing a CICD pipeline where you uh, uh, you want to deploy your applications into the uh, OpenShift cluster, okay? OpenShift cluster, for example, you have a code, and you are making this code into the image and this image you need to deploy it to the uh, cluster okay so this is a very high level okay there are multiple uh, portions here like the various stages that that can be done but uh, just to give an overview of what the cli does i am showing you this example okay so in order to deploy this uh, your images okay to the cluster either you can go into this console you can do the manual stuff and all, and you can uh, deploy your uh, images and all. But that doesn't make sense, right? When you are doing a CACD pipeline and there shouldn't be any human interventions and all. So in that cases, we will be using some sort of CLI commands, okay? CLI commands are mainly used for your CACD part if you want to interact on the back end and some, for example, like uh, if this console was down due to some reason and you were not able to access it, but if you want to know the how many pods are running in your uh, console or cluster, and if you want to see the logs of a specific parts, then um, the CLI is a very handy tool for us. Okay, so the CLI we be using OC is the tool that we need to install on your on the workstation that we want to interact from, and uh, from there we need to authenticate ourselves to the cluster, and from there we can use our OC commands and all. Okay, I'll be doing a separate video on the various OC commands that are available, but in this video let's. Uh, stick to a specific topic like how you can install uh, OC on a Windows platform. Okay, so main advantage is, is you can use uh, in automation very frequently. And uh, in the Jenkins, for example, in, through Jenkins, if you want to uh, in, uh, deploy your application to the OpenShift, then you can use a CLI commands and you can do all the stuff and all. Okay, so let's get started with that. Uh, so this was the Windows machine, okay? And if you go to the command prompt for now and uh, run through the administrator, if you give a command by name OC, it was saying OC is not recognized as an internal or external command because we haven't installed OC, right? So let's get started with how you can download the binaries and how you can install it and how you can uh, authenticate to the cluster, okay? Uh, let me go to the browser. Uh, directly, you can search with uh, Okay, uh, you can search with the OpenShift release binaries where it will be navigating you to the respect to GitHub repository where all your OC uh, CLIs are present. Okay, let me open shift uh, release binaries. 
and here it is the release OpenShift origin one, right? This is the GitHub repository for the all your OpenShift CLI tools. Okay, and uh, if you go to the tags, there are multiple versions that are available. Uh, you can you can download your CLI based upon the version that you are using. I basically prefer either 3.1 uh, 10 or 3.11. Okay, so let me go and download the 3.10. Okay, uh, if you go down a bit. You can have the various uh, operating system. For example, if you're using the uh, Windows version, you can download this one. If you're using a Mac or a Linux, you can download the respective binaries based upon your operating system. Okay, as now we are showing it on the Windows. So let me download the Windows one and make sure you are downloading the OpenShift origin client rather than the OpenShift origin server. Okay, so we should be downloading this one, the OpenShift origin client for the Windows specifically. So let me download it and let me save that. Okay, you downloads open folder. And you can see I have the zip file here. Okay, let me extract that file. I'm extracting to the same folder or else you can extract it to a specific folder where you can have all your binary setup and all. Okay, so if you see I have my OpenShift origin client tool version 3.1110. And I'm having an application called as OC. Okay, so now how you can install it, right? So uh, go to your environmental variables. Where it is? To your environmental variables. Okay, and from there uh, in the path, click on Edit. And you need to add a new path here. So what we'll be adding is uh, copy the path where you have your OC one, the op OpenShift OC stands for OpenShift client and uh, copy the path over here and go to your path where you are editing it, create a new, paste the one that you have copied. Okay, so now click on okay and okay and okay, right? So now let's close this command prompt for now and open a new terminal. run as administrator and if I enter OC, if you see it was giving me some output, right? Previously the output was nothing and we, has, we have seen error message like a OC is not recognized as an internal or external command. So now when we enter OC, we have got some output. We were not worried about what the output is, but OC was successfully installed. That's our agenda, right? So now OC was installed and now how can I communicate or how can I see what are the pods running in my cluster, right? So for that reason, I need to, Authenticate to my cluster, right? So how you can do that? Okay, so one thing is go to your cluster where your uh, cluster is running. Okay, for example, my cluster is running at this particular IP. Okay, in your organizations, you will be having something called as a domain name where you can uh, authenticate with that. Okay, for now, let me copy this one. Okay. HTTPS, the port, uh, the IP address followed by my 8443 port where my OpenShift is running. Okay, let me copy that. OC, if you give OC login, it will ask you to enter the username. Okay, paste your username there. So not the username. Uh, yeah, anyhow, I already authenticated previously. So it was I, 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 um, giving me the uh, URL also or else it will ask you to enter the cluster name initially. Like you should be entering the cluster name, but as I already logged into that uh, in the previously, uh, it was not asking me to enter my cluster uh, details. It was directly asking me to enter the username. Okay, in that case, you directly enter OC login. It will ask you to enter username, give your username as developer. It will be depending upon what the username is. For example, if you're using in your organizations, you can authenticate with your Active Directory one, like your MSIDs or LAPS where you usually log into your workstations. Okay, and enter your password. Okay, so now it was saying, Login successful. You have one project on the server, my project, right? So what is my project? If you go into your OpenShift cluster, there is only one project running, right? The my project one. And you can see only a, a single application is running with a single pod. So if I want to get those details here, you can enter OC get pods. And if you see test one nine eight. 548 is a pod name and it is in the running state. This is for the build one. Okay, we can leave about this and we should mainly um, 
looking into the test one 98548. This was a pod running inside my application. Okay. This was my test is an application and my project is the project. Okay. So 98548, right? Let's cross check with it in from the console. If you go to the applications and pods, you'll be seeing 98548. Right? It's in the running state. And uh, if you want to have it, if you want to access that application, you can have the URL handy here and you can have your application running in your browser. So I think I have given you uh, a clear understanding of how you can install the OC client in your Windows machine. In the next video, I'll be showing you how you can install the same OC from your Linux machine so that you will be comfortable in both the operating systems. If you are using Mac, you can use the same one that you that we are trying to implement in Linux as both are having the same uh, flavor, right? So yeah, uh, to summarize like OpenShift CLI is we use them majorly, right? Uh, we use on a day-to-day -day basis. The console part as well as the CLI part also we'll be using on a daily basis. CLI part we majorly use for the automation part to make it a CACD implementation. If you want to have something from the back end, if you want to log in from your terminals and all, we need to install OC on your workstations. And after that, you need to authenticate to the cluster so that you can fetch all the details, all the objects that are present in the cluster and all. Okay, so yeah, if you like my videos and all, do subscribe to my channel and share to your friends uh, so that you will be getting the latest updates when and when I post it. Yeah. See you again in the next video, guys. Bye for now.